This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1165, 10 Tips to Make Your Anniversary Unsexy, by Shauna Scaife of simpleonpurpose.ca. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am your host and narrator, Greg Audino, and this is the show where I read to you from articles that can help you build better relationships in your life. And I also take your personal relationship questions on Saturdays for our Q&A episodes. So do remember that you can email me at advice at oldpodcast.com if you'd like to submit a question for one of those episodes. But today we're here to read, so let's jump into this great article from Shauna Scaife as we optimize your life. 10 Tips to Make Your Anniversary Unsexy by Shauna Scaife of simpleonpurpose.ca We take turns planning an event for our anniversary each year. Last year was a great boozy getaway that I had planned. So, last month, I jokingly reminded my husband that it was his year. Jokingly, because I'm toting around an almost full-term belly and all the pregnancy symptoms that it can possibly accompany. But, he took the opportunity and drafted the in-laws for a couple nights and planned a trip away for us. The grandparents reluctantly agreed. Note, Sarcasm is flying off that page and smacking you in the face. And the countdown to two weeks till grandma's farm began. Our anniversary heals right on the day after our LJ's birthday. So after way too much ice cream cake and a monkey birthday hat that was and is being worn everywhere but to bed, we were ready to take off on our anniversary morning. In the same panicky, my panic, routine we always have to get ready for morning departures, I was packing some clothes in Levi's room. Connor was in there with LJ, who was jumping on the bed and laughing at him, trying to get her dressed. He looked over and shouted, Oh, hey! Happy anniversary! It was sadly like one of those commercials about how kid chaos can take over your life with the rosy undertone of all the amazing things that come along with it. I totally didn't start getting emotional or anything. Besides, I saved that for listening to Stuart McLean talk about wheat. We paid for the indulgence of ice cream cake and ended up with a sick toddler on the way there. I thought it would be smart to put her seat in the middle to help with her car sickness. And they played so well together for four minutes. Then the rest of the trip was a crying medley of fighting over toys. He's touching me. She's sticking her foot in my face. Topped off by the lingering odor of vomit and a very caffeinated husband singing every 90s song on Sirius. Then... We got to the farm. Crying stopped, the kids decided they liked fun and hated pants, and we raided the strawberry patch. And off we headed on our sixth wedding anniversary. We went to a small mountain town full of late 20-somethings wearing hiking sandals, crawling with whole families biking through the town, and great little restaurants that take pride in making great food. Like most trips we go on, we plan it around a few touristy things and then just walk from meal to meal. Our dining standards may have dropped since moving to our current town. Status, thrilled if it isn't a teen burger, though I eat my fair share of those. Status, pseudo-foodie snobs, if the menu has more words like fresh, local, and house-made than free cookie with order. We started with a great dinner. Then we took a long walk on the river. Walks are totally romantic. But the reality is, pregnancy symptoms don't just pack up and leave for anniversary getaways. And from 6.30pm, I recommend everyone stay downwind of me. And if pregnancy symptoms don't subside, why not make a getaway more interesting, with some cramping turning into false labor in the middle of the night? I was up timing contractions in the middle of the night, packing my bags, mapping a route to the hospital. My husband didn't wake, but if he did, he'd find me in the bathroom muttering, I'm not ready for this. Maybe if I ignore it, it'll go away. Thankfully, they stopped after a few hours, and I went to sleep. In the morning, I made some calls and was directed to follow up at the local hospital. They did some monitoring and poking. I did some joking about the romantic ambiance of the random toilet flusher in the middle of the wall. Then the doctor looked at my husband and said, No hanky-panky, at least for a week. Which wasn't awkward at all. What was awkward? was now cutting through the throbbing tension between us for the rest of the trip. But, alas, we found some ways. So, here are our tried and tested tips on how to make your anniversary getaway unsexy. Number one, go into false labor. 
I mean, duh, <laughs> rookie move. The key is to making this totally unsexy is to then talk obsessively about your cervix and baby positioning. Number two, pick vegetarian entrees and the most garlicky menu items that come with the written disclaimer, a side of mint is recommended. Number three, go on an educational tour and listen to your husband's most interesting tidbits on turbines and generators and other heavy metal objects that don't make sense no matter how relatable you try to make it by comparing it to everyday things because every chick has an internal reference parameter for 20 football fields and 17 kayaks. Number four, hang out around science exhibits and public bathrooms, more than socially acceptable. I don't care how old or cool you are, everyone wants to touch the electricity ball. Number five, attempt a hike in a national park for which you are completely unprepared, in the rain, with your very pregnant wife and her Jesus sandals. Number six, Listen to said wife, recite all of her college botany knowledge bombs, and wait while she squats and grunts to take 17 photos of the flower that inspired your daughter's name. Number seven, help wife squeeze into her nude-colored maternity spanx, and don't let yourself forget that mental image of what she's wearing underneath that nice maxi dress while out on your romantic dinner of not-teen burgers. Number eight, Complain to your husband about the heat and the bees when you're having a nice quiet breakfast outside, and then wash down your nausea with some more cereal crusted toast and mention how you hope it helps make you regular. Number nine, wander around tourist hot spots. Don't pay the fee to actually see the main attraction. Rather, roam the grounds and look for a Slovakian woman with very distinct lighting requirements for the portrait that you volunteer to take for her. Number 10, Use your kids' code words for everyday objects like muffins and race cars. Then, smile knowingly at each other while you remind one another that, yes, you do have the most adorable children in the province, and haggle on some pending baby names. And in case you were wondering, the kids didn't want to leave their grandparents and may have asked the entire way home and into the next morning to go back. Also, packing your luggage in a laundry basket is also a very modern and classy way to travel. Make sure to use matching baskets, too. You don't want to look like an unprepared chump who just threw things into a basket and said, hmm, all fits. Why mess with it? You just listened to the post titled, 10 Tips to Make Your Anniversary Unsexy by Shauna Scaife of simpleonpurpose.ca. ORD listeners, if you are here, then you're as excited as I am that mental health has a bigger presence these days both on the global scale and in everyday conversation. And leading the charge is Noom Mood. Noom Mood guides you to mental wellness with a step-by-step approach, giving you the tools you need to tackle stressful events and feelings so you'll be empowered to take on whatever life throws at you. As for me, something I've been struggling with recently is a sort of existential anxiety as well as an existential grief too, just really putting a lot of energy towards how certain events impact the wholeness of my life and my identity. But new mood has helped me to take things in stride a little bit more and just get more comfortable with letting things be what they are and not overthinking them in a way that just doesn't help me. And Noom can help you too, because you're bigger than your troubles and Noom's behavior change experts know that. So start to worry less and feel happier by using Noom for just 10 minutes per day. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash O-R-D. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash O-R-D to start your trial today. And a big thanks to Shauna for some more laughs as usual. Definitely a unique article today, but smart to keep in mind for all couples. And that's because sometimes these big, sexy events we want to plan, they don't always go quite the way we want them to, or they just aren't as easy to put together as we'd like. Preparing for exceptions to these types of fantasies is great for any couple, because we don't want to fall into the trap of relying on things to unfold in a certain way that we've seen in a movie or maybe we've made up in our minds as being the only way. So look to Shauna's work today if you want to get into the rhythm of embracing the mundane with your partner, because a good relationship is about loving the day-to-day. It's not a carousel of exclusively spectacular, breathtaking events. Not always, anyway. But that'll do it for today, dear friends. Thanks a lot for showing up and making another episode possible. I am forever indebted to you guys. 
And you know we'll be back doing the same thing all over again tomorrow. So pop back into Optimal Relationships Daily again for this week's Thursday show, where your optimal life awaits.